morning. So I did want to make a quick note before I start the video. I've been shooting this video for the past two or three days. And it's a little bit longer video because I cover a whole bunch of different subjects and I figured I'd show you guys what's going on. But in the next week or so, we have a lot going on. And over the next couple of months, I have a lot going on. And we're going to be doing different subjects. So I want to make sure you guys have your notification bell turned on. A lot of you guys are subscribers, but you don't have that bell turned on, which sends you notifications. Why is that important? It's important because the way that the YouTube algorithm works is if I cover a subject that may not be based on your interest, it, your, that video may not show up in your feed or may, you may not get a notification on it. And we're going to be doing some different stuff over the next couple of months, including work on that cabin, work on this area, some work on the house. So make sure it's turned on. It's a little bit longer video. So if you're looking for a short TikTok video, this ain't it because <laughs> I put a lot of time and we shot a lot of footage. So. Here we go. Can you tell fall is here? Man, when you see that much fog on the pond, you know that temperatures are changing. That pond water is warm, that steam is rising up. That's just so cool looking. Spring poo piles. God, that's gorgeous. Got a bunch of rotten veggies here. And this was an unfortunate afterthought on my behalf. Because I guarantee you, if not now, over time that PVC will want to, through vibration, will want to come up. Okay, so this question has come up three times or four times. People keep asking why I leave the ego gate all the way open. almost like it doesn't matter how much organic matter, it doesn't matter how much, how many roots you put in this stuff, that potassium basically takes the clay molecules and sort of lets them separate. And when that happens, it sort of turns into this concrete. That's why the high potassium is bad. And that looks good. That looks better than most, most subdivisions that you see. Oh no, here it comes. <laughs> He'd be doing it now. He'd be hitting it. <laughs> He's like, later, man. I'm going to do this crap on my own. I don't need you. Fred's really trying today. <laughs> He's working that fish feeder. He's going to get him a fish at some point. Oh, man. Not too shabby looking, huh? So, I just finished cutting this with the new 2024 mclean reel mower i did a full video on that for you guys so make sure if you're looking for a reel mower make sure you go check out that video uh in the description below by the way i'm going to cover a bunch of stuff today it gets kind of crazy if i forget to put a link to something let me know drop a comment down below uh the lawn guides i'll link on that page below i'll link to the lawn guides i'll link to the mcleans i'll link to whatever if I'm free, uh, the leaf sweeper, I always forget to, the leaf sweeper, this time of year, people always want the leaf sweeper. So I had John come out here and sweep this. What am I doing? Uh, before I start, I've been down and out for over 24 hours. And the reason being is I have a problem with influenza. I've almost been hospitalized once and twice. I was in bed basically for seven days. So I have to get the flu vaccine. So at the same time, I decided to get the COVID vaccine. Well, it's really effective this year because I basically had the flu for eight hours. Man, I had the chills and everything for uh, a whole night. And then the next day I woke, I felt like crap. So basically I told the guys, I said, don't come over. I'm just gonna sit in the recliner and watch YouTube. <laughs> so while I was watching YouTube, I actually stumbled upon a real cool video it's a couple in the UK, they have a small farm and they brought over a regenerative farmer and he talked about imbalances in your soil and including potassium, 
which I have high potassium, if you follow my channel, everywhere on this property I have high potassium. And it's something I've been working on and working on and researching. So I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But uh, I screwed up on this gravel pad for the this week, Thursday, I have the new cabin being brought in. And I forgot that I need a water line to go under the gravel. So we had to dig that out. I had to replace that. Uh, we have to cut the front because I've been down and out. So the front was all long and long and shaggy. We had to cut this. Uh, we had to cut this field back here. We had to cut the orchard. We had a bunch of stuff going on today. I'm just going to string it together. Look, if, if it's not if not for you, Netflix is on. Watch that. But anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop in here. And I'm gonna, actually going to steal a little clip from their video. And I'll put a link to their full video in the description below. It's actually kind of cool. It's a cool little farm that they have. But the regenerative expert, this guy's really knowledgeable. He comes in and looks at your soil. And he tells them that basically he talks about three three nutrients or three elements and it's calcium magnesium and potassium and what he says is you have a opener versus a flattener or squisher so magnesium squishes the soil potassium flattens the soil and calcium opens the soil yeah it can also be caused by um chemistry of your soil and i thought your chemistry of your soil is very similar to mine and chemistry in soil is really quite important that people don't actually um, understand how important it is. And the three main, main elements in soil are calcium. And calcium is really important. You, that's something that keeps the soil open, allows drainage. You then have magnesium that does the opposite. It squeezes the soil together. That's, that can be a real problem if you have too much. And then you have potassium, which will flatten the soil. And if you've got an, enough openers, and what we always say is six openers, to one squeezer and one flattener, you've got a fairly decent friable soil. Yeah. So that's what he was talking about and it all started to make sense on this property because we dig down about eight inches in any of these fields, it's like we're hitting bedrock. It's hard as could be. So I have to either mechanically or with a calcium treatment come in here and start to work on my fields. Now, understand we are a no-till regenerative operation. We do a little bit of strip tilling in our gardens, but that's only to put organic matter and biochar in. But the rest of the property stays green 365 days a year. But man, I cannot get this soil to, to loosen up deep. And it's because of all this sedimentary rock that's releasing this potassium and my potassium levels are excessive. So I can't put anything down that has potassium in it. So this is why I stress to you guys consistently, get a soil test. If you put down excess of something, there's a chance that you're poisoning your soil. If I put down really high phosphorus, as an example, I may depleting, my plant may not be able to pull up enough nitrogen. So there's that battle that goes on. So I really want you guys to get a soil test. In the description below, I'll link to that online soil test that I like. I, on the farm property, I send mine off to Clemson University. Um, just because I do so many samples, I need larger samples of the field and whatever, but I'll link to that as well too. So what is the mechanical solution that I can use? There's something called a subsoil, subsoil till. It's, I hate to call it a plow because it really isn't. And it's actually just a long blade that goes down. And at the end of the long blade, there's a little tooth. And it goes down about 20 inches in the soil. And it doesn't, it doesn't till up the soil. It actually goes deep and lifts that soil deep. But the top of the soil doesn't get that much to stir. In fact, you can run it over with a tire, a tractor tire, and you'll never know you've done it. Well, it'll allow water to infiltrate, it'll allow roots to go deep down in, and it'll break up that hard layer. So I just found out, I was gonna buy one of them for David, my bush hog guy, uh, but he told me, he said, I've got one. So within the next week or two, I'm gonna have him come in and I'm gonna have him subsoil, run that subsoil hook um, up on one of my fields and we're going to do at least one of my fields. We're going to test with it I'm trying to find someone to put down some lime calcium carbonate lime on the fields as well, too My pH is a little bit low anyways, but that'll help up that soil too Soil testing absolutely critical. I'll stress that but again, I'm not a fan of winterizers and I want to stress this to you guys a lot of winterizers are really high potassium or really high calcium Well, what if your calcium uh, excuse me or phosphorus? What if those two are already high? You don't want to put more down. So a soil test is critical. Don't just put something down because someone says it's a good idea. There are a lot of people out there who say, I need to lime every year. You don't need to lime every year. If your pH, if your pH is right, you don't need to put down lime. 
I need to put down a winterizer. You don't need to put down a winterizer. If you have plenty of phosphorus and plenty of potassium, the only thing you need to put down basically right now, this time of year for cool season grass, fast release nitrogen, fast release nitrogen. The only thing I'm putting down on this soil right now is green chalker. Green chalker is an all fast release. It's a 712 and that's all I'm using here and it's all I'm using on the pond. So if you got a cool season lawn, throw down some green chalker. Uh, anyways, it's gonna be kind of a crazy video. Um, <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna string it together. Like I said, if you wanna watch it, watch it. If not, go hit that Netflix button right now and get out of here later. So this is that compost pile that we're working on. We've basically taken wood chips, which you do not wanna put directly into your soil. Taken wood chips, we mixed it in with raw horse manure. I've got dirt booster and then I've got vegetable garden waste in here. So rotten tomatoes and whatever. And you can put, after this sits and after this starts to decompose, then you can put it into your soil. The carbon to nitrogen ratio of wood chips is, is crazy. It's real high in carbon and it's low on nitrogen and organic. So it'll basically rob nutrients out of your soil in order to go through the decomposition process. So you have to, if you're gonna put this into your soil, which would be great for my soil, I have to put it, I have to load it up, um, preload it before I put it in the soil. I wanna open this up and see if it's active and then I got some vegetables I gotta dump in it. That's a thing of beauty, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a thing of beauty. Got a bunch of rotten veggies here. And this was an unfortunate afterthought on my behalf. So on this side of the cabin, I have my electrical box. We're gonna trench down from here. And we're gonna run a water line and a power line. Well, it's fine for the power, but I need the water to go in that side of the cabin. And I need it so, I need it buried in here so it doesn't freeze. <laughs> so we're gonna take this two inch conduit pipe and we're gonna go down to ground level and we're gonna bury that so I can run that water line and then come up into the cabin. So I keep saying we are gonna dig it. Is that the whole thing or oh, Saturday? After football game, could do that much sleep. We've got this buried, we're smoothing it out. Here's my end. We can actually uncover this and cut that up here if we want, and then recover it, and then the other side's exposed too. So now, I mean, unless I have, you know, like last year we had a crazy week where we were down to like 15 degrees for five days. It's, it's Georgia. There really is no frost line. I don't have to worry about it. John and Jeff are going to cut this. We just overseeded this with an annual ryegrass. Um, they'll cut over here, just get everything nice looking. They got to cut the orchard. The orchard needs to be cut. And then we got to cut the pond and we got to cut the back. I'm going to go put out, I got to go put out feed for the deer. Bunch of stuff going on. Okay, so this question has come up three times or four times. People keep asking why I leave the ego gate all the way open. You know, they say, well, you, it has a double mulching blade. It's not mulching if it's closed. All right, so you just ran this, okay, with a double mulching blade with a door down, and what happens? Not even halfway through, it clogs up. Halfway through this line, it clogs, clogs up completely. Yeah. So I had them turn the unit over and we pulled half a bucket underneath 
underneath is where it clogs up and you can hear the blade grinding you hear the blade grinding so what we have to do is we leave it fully open and we stand off to the right so that when it throws crap off to the left so go ahead and cut and we'll show you We're having to cut early. The grass is really wet. It's long because I haven't felt good. I didn't want to come out here and cut it yesterday. But uh, I'm just telling you, man, you, you got to cut with that gate open, unfortunately. Now, I wouldn't probably want to do this with a gas mower. <laughs> I mean, a gas mower hit a rock or something, come back and break your leg open. He stole your chariot. I'm teaching. I'm teaching him. I'm teaching him how to ride your chariot. We're gonna get firewood. I don't think Jess ever driven a UTV. Let's see if there's any snakes. So this is where I've got my firewood. This gets really hot, by the way. It dries out this wood really nice. I wanted, I kind of hooked this up the other day to the UTV to kind of show you guys, but this is a real bad representation. So this comes along here and underneath this, it's really opened up, but this top layer, as soon as you, as soon as you sort of roll, roll on it, you can drive over this, it shuts everything back down, but it opens up this surface. Now here's what it kind of looks like. <clears throat> Again, this is a, this is a bad representation of it, but this is what a subsoiler looks like. It's basically just a hook like this. And that hook, um, it's a very narrow blade and it doesn't disturb the surface much, but it'll open up and lift down underneath. It'll allow water to permeate down. It'll allow roots to get down in. And that's kind of what I'm going to do to this whole field. David says he has one of these. Hopefully it's the right one. And if he does, I'm going to come through here and ho hopefully about every 24 inches, I'd like to go ahead and subsoil this field as a test. And if it does well, which I think it will, I may end up doing the corn field and actually doing this field down here too. All right, so Jeff is over here stacking wood inside the shed. We'll transfer a load down. That Vermont casting stove I have is so efficient i was telling jeff six or seven pieces of firewood will basically run that all evening for me i don't i let it tone down when i go to bed but one of my problems here is four hours of full sun ain't nothing gonna grow that's warm season back here so i've been playing with all kinds of cool season Right now, this perennial rye mix seems to be doing fairly well. It's so wet out here that, I mean, some a lot of these little leaves are just slipping through, so I'm having to come by with the blower and blow them too. Oh, I 
Too shabby, huh? So again, I cut this with the McLean 2024 LC low cut series. What a great machine. Now that'll cut all the way down to three eighths of an inch. That's a quarter plus an eighth. <laughs> That's scalping height. And cut up to about one and three quarter. So if you want a three inch grass, do not buy a real mower. You shouldn't be buying a real mower if you want tall grass. Real mowers are designed for short grass. So if you have a grass that can be cut short, then uh, real mower is great. So again, I'm, I ordered the one with the Briggs on it because I've had such good luck with Briggs and I've never ordered a real mower with the Briggs on it. I really did it for you guys. So, And it's about 200 bucks cheaper with the Briggs. I love my Briggs up there. I got two or three of them. That looks good. Knock on wood, we'll see how this survives. You know, we'll see what happens in the winter time, and then we'll see what happens in the next summer. I don't know. I have no idea. So it's, uh, gosh, it's at least a day after this. <laughs> I shot all this footage and cut this. This looks phenomenal, by the way. I am really happy. Now, this is that perennial rye that I put down. We have tried so many different seeds back here, but this perennial rye seems to be doing well in here. Again, this soil is impacted a little bit by potassium, but it also has drainage issues, which can cause an anaerobic bacteria. So that's why I'm out here. If you see me doing a lot of aeration, especially like spike aeration, I'm trying to get this soil to drain more. And that's one of the issues that often comes up. You start to get that black sort of mold on top of, your, on top of that surface. And that can actually be the cause of high pH. I know we're treating for high pH, but that can actually cause the high pH is that wet dampness just sitting in the soil. So there's a lot going on over the next few months. I want you guys to make sure you subscribe, you turn on your bell for notifications, and uh, tomorrow they're bringing that cabin. So we'll see what happens. Talk to you later. Doc.